So Fabian, I see some very spectacular images here on the screen. This is a case you brought from Berlin, right? Yeah, Thomas, this case presented to our hospital a couple of days ago and he's a 30-year-old young man and he has increasing shortness of breath on exertion and he was told when he was a young boy that he has a thick heart but he never went to a cardiologist to get clarification on this issue. So this is the first transthoracic echo that was performed. The diagnosis is quite clear, it's hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and we can see two features of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy in this case. Pretty massive SAM actually. I Rarely do you see such a spectacular form of SAM. Does the patient also have mitral regurgitation then? Yeah, I, um, I put on the color Doppler and you can see that he has an eccentric relevant mitral regurgitation. And you can also see the turbulent flow in the left ventricular outflow tract. So two reasons why this young man has um, shortness of breath. So maybe we can go to the four chamber view. In this case, the diagnosis, as you probably all agree, is quite clear. This is hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. But what about ejection fraction? Yeah, ejection fraction is normal. If you would quantify it, it's highly normal. But we have to make sure that to understand that normal ejection fraction does not mean that this heart is healthy. Yeah, so I guess this is probably one of the important roles of speckle tracking in such a case. Um, for the diagnosis, it probably would not really help us very much, or would it help us? Or let's go to the speckle tracking tracing, and maybe you can show us what inf additional information we get from this case. So we have defined the systole in this patient previously, and I immediately go to the analysis here. I take the long axis, apical long axis, and I perform speckle tracking by the AFI modus, the automated function imaging. So just while you're tracing this, my question would be, how do you actually uh, solve the problem that the myocardium is a different thickness in different parts? Do you care? Do you always try to trace the entire thickness of the myocardium? Um, no, I, I try to include as many speckles as possible in my region of interest. Some parts are thicker. I cannot completely represent them in the region of interest. I don't make it too wide because otherwise there's a risk of including pericardium and that would um, make my analysis um, very problematic. Okay, so the strain we get in this specific case now would be in this view minus 15.5 which is definitely reduced but what does the regional strain tell us? You can see on the left upper image you can see that the basal anteroseptal segment is reduced, that the long longitudinal function here is very bad. You can see no red color in this segment and you can also see in the curves here that this segment has almost no longitudinal contraction. Now this is actually the segment which also shows the most pronounced hypertrophy, right? So uh, it seems as if speckle tracking also shows us those segments which are more diseased than others and frequently it is actually the basal septum or at least parts of the septum, right? And I think this is an important issue when discussing this patient, for example, with a cardiac surgeon who might want to perform myectomy to really know where's the problem going on. Right. Maybe we can go to the global strain, to the bullseye display, to again see the values and see which segments have the most problem. So in this bullseye analysis, we can see that the anteroseptum part and the anterior part, especially the basal segments of the left ventricle, are impaired in this patient. But actually, the ap apical segments are hyperdynamic, right? I think it's part of the compensation in this patient to maintain normal hemodynamics, that right. the non-affected parts uh, compensate by increased contractility. Right. But in this case, can you say something about the risk of sudden death? Not directly, but we can look at the curves once again. And this program tells us the dispersion, and this means how asynchronous is the contraction of the left ventricle. And you can see that this dispersion in this case is 90 milliseconds. And this is a highly pathological value. And we know from some studies that the higher the dispersion is, the more likely the patient is to suffer from ventricular arrhythmias or even from sudden cardiac death. I mean, this is not yet in the guidelines, of course, but it's something that is being investigated in more detail. And maybe it is an additional factor that pushes to bringing the patient to ICD. So 
Keep in mind that uh, when you perform such speckle tracking analysis in patients who have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, there's a lot of information inside. As Fabian pointed out, we get a much better handle on the degree of left ventricular dysfunction. It's actually more sensitive than ejection fraction in looking at the true problem. We see which segments have the most problems. We can follow up the patients to see what happens over time. And we have this very interesting parameter of dispersion.